My name is Oral Bax. Together with my wife Livia, we founded a consultancy firm for watch collectors called Bax and Russo. And in 2014, we entered into an exclusive agreement with Philips, the auction house, to create a watch department for the most passionate, most demanding watch collectors in the world. I have fallen in love with fine mechanical vintage watches at the tender age of 12. My father was always in love with watches and during the years when the Swiss watch industry changed to quartz watches, he started to collect himself vintage mechanical watches. It's something you don't control, it just makes click and you're in love. My first watch, before I understood mechanical watches, was a terrible digital watch that had a calculator on the screen. And my parents were really disappointed because they thought that I would not appreciate good craftsmanship. The watch was broken after six months. But in the meantime, I learned about watches and that knowledge, that passion, that curiosity has only increased in the last 37 years. The watches in my collections, that collection is probably an exaggerated word, in the group of watches that I have, that are the most meaningful to me, are not the most expensive or the most exclusive, but those that are connected to an event, to a person. I think we all achieve occasionally something in life, professionally, in our family, when we build a house, when we become parents. And I think the watch is an incredibly beautiful object to mark, to celebrate such a moment. Rewarding ourselves, I think, is much about buying a beautiful watch. The first and most important advice you have to do it with your heart, like when you eventually meet the man or the woman of your life. I can't give you an advice how tall, how small, how old he or she has to be. Don't collect what your friends collect, because we're all different. The watch is a very personal expression of your identity, of your character. Second, do your homework. I don't think you build a sustainable collection by just going with your credit card to a large number of shops and walk out with 20 shopping bags and say, now I have a watch collection. Think about it. Research the watch. Ask questions. Do your research. Today you find a lot of information on Google. There is incredible literature. You can even learn about watches by reading the Philips auction catalogs. The third philosophical point is less is more. A collection doesn't become a good collection because you have the largest number. But a good collection is because you've got the best pieces. And when you identify the best piece at your taste and at your budget, don't try to save money. If you cannot afford it, skip the purchase. But don't buy something that is a compromise. It won't make you happy long term. Sorry to go back to the man and the woman of your life. If you can't marry the one you love, don't marry just the next best person on the street. To have someone, it will not last, I fear. Today's habits have changed quite a bit. Women are driving SUVs, women are smoking cigars, and women are wearing big diver's watches. So today is no longer categorized, this is ladies, this is men. Half of the, let's say, 36 millimeter day-date collection is worn by women today, but it wasn't conceived as a lady's watch. I think probably women 
are much more practical than men. I sincerely believe that a man is, when it comes to watches, maybe also when it comes to cars, more prepared to compromise practicality because he's in love with the engine, the movement, the complexity, the engineering, the craftsmanship. And I think women are more practical and more driven by aesthetics. There are watches for a million US dollars where the entire value is in the movement. Maybe they even have a steel case and a leather strap. And sometimes you don't even realize the person in front of you has a million dollar watch on the wrist. And then there's the opposite, where you have a million dollars in stones on your watch, but the mechanical part, the watchmaking, the movement isn't of any particular importance. So in one instance you buy watchmaking, in the other instance you buy jewelry. My first question, my first answer to your question is what are you actually investing in when you marry? Is it your wife, your husband, an investment? But seriously, my hope is that someone who buys a watch buys it for the pleasure. We want to feel good about it. We want to express who we are. But now comes the commercial aspect. I fully understand that no one wants to buy a watch for $10,000 knowing that the next day it's worth $5,000. We don't work hard to burn our money. And the watch, of course, has a value that you can collect and realize when you sell it again. Anything, real estate, art, fine motor cars, wine, jewelry, and watches, are priced on the market according to supply and demand. Do consider how many watches of this type exist and do consider how much demand there might be for this watch. And the rarer the watch, the more likely it will give you satisfaction when you sell it. The quality of the watch has a huge impact on the resale value. And this is a reason, for example, why Patek Philippe is such a popular brand for collectors and achieves record prices at auction. Millennials are massively underestimated in regards to their appetite and curiosity about culture, about art, about old-fashioned old fashioned things. Because if you buy a plastic watch for $20, it tells the time. But it doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't say who invented the watch doesn't say who made the watch, what watchmaker was polishing it. If it's a vintage watch, it doesn't say how many pieces were made and who wore it before, the provenance. And an artwork, a watch, a great Bordeaux or a Burgundy wine, they tell you a story, a personal story. And today these stories are more important than ever before. Because with 7 billion people on the planet, we become so much more similar to each other. We go and buy this mass-produced fashion for $9.99, which means that at the end, half the university wears the same t-shirts. And I think we all, and the millennials are no exceptions, want to break out of this mainstream the society development. Tudor is a fantastic brand. Tudor is a brand that is obviously a sister brand to Rolex. Tudor does not make the heavy 18 karat gold day dates like Rolex. Tudor makes more sporty watches in stainless steel, in bronze, chronograph, dive watches, 
for a young, dynamic society. Tudor has an extraordinary price-value ratio. They have won numerous prizes at the GPHD, the Geneva Grand Prix, that is considered the Oscars of watchmaking. And you always know that with every Tudor you buy, you somehow buy also Rolex. The GPHG, that is the Grand Prix for watchmaking in Geneva, is often described as the Oscars of watchmaking. There's not just one winner, like in the Oscars, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Movie, Best Documentary. In watchmaking, there's not just one good watch, the best chronograph, best dive watch, best calendar watch, best grand complication, best watch up to $3,000. So also by price points, there are different categories. The GPHG takes place once a year in Geneva. It is organized and supervised by the authorities in Geneva. So it is not a private business, but a public foundation that has the support of the authorities. Winners this year were both large famous brands, but also small independent brands. Watches with a retail price over a million dollars and watches with retail prices for $1,000. It is a very democratic, very broad spectrum and it compensates those who make particular efforts in bringing the entire watch industry forward by being either excellent when it comes to quality, innovative, daring, resilient, and there is even a price for a lifelong, lifelong achievement. Amongst the highlights this year were prices given to Audemars Piguet, prices given to independents like Kari Wuttilainen and MBNF. There were prices given to very small, hardly known independents in the lower budget category. There was a Tudor that was compensated there was a Seiko compensated for a diver's watch and the Life Award was given to Luc Petavino who started the famous charity Only Watch to find financing, to research and possibly one day heal the terrible muscular disease, the Duchenne muscular disease. Only Watch is a beautiful combination of the charity and watchmaking. We at Philips had the incredible pleasure to host an edition in 2015 with notable watches and notable record prices achieved. It is an incredible teamwork because he brings together watchmakers that are otherwise divided between Basel and the SIHH. They're in different groups, whether it's Richemont, Swatch Group, Caring, LVMH, Patrick Philippe, Independence. He manages to bring them all together for humanity. And that is just the most amazing achievement. I believe that Patrick Philippe has always been the number one brand at the charity auction. The Stern family has always very intelligently understood what the watch collectors enjoy. The most valuable pocket watch ever auctioned is a Patek Philippe. And the stainless steel 1518 that we auctioned here at Philips a few years ago at $11 million is still today the most expensive vintage Patek Philippe wristwatch. Patek Philippe always has 
pledged that any watch that was ever made can be serviced, can be repaired. The small number of pieces they make is another guarantee that the supply and demand balance remains healthy. So I'm not at all surprised that we see, I believe for the eighth edition, Patek Philippe at the top rank at Only Watch. Personally, I love changing my watch as often as possible. Sometimes even the same day I'm wearing two different watches. The watch I choose is always a reflection of my mood. Purely on an emotional level, we have celebrated the charity auction with the unique Zenith El Primero. It was for me a natural choice as a charm to bring me luck to wear my personal 1969 Zenith El Primero chronograph that is exactly the same as the re-editions that are available today, but of course it's 1969. So I thought it was appropriate that I have my personal El Primero on the wrist when selling the Platinum El Primero for a charitable cause.